Giant pythons are invading Florida, slithering straight into people's backyards, and now the state is declaring open season on them. Most people think of the Everglades as nothing more than a swamp full of alligators. But look closer, a war is unfolding in the tall grass. For decades we have been losing ground to an invasive predator that eats everything. They prey on birds and mammals, while destroying the food supply of panthers, alligators and other creatures. We thought we understood the scale of the problem. We thought we knew how many of them were out there. We were wrong. It took a massive wildfire to expose the truth. When the grass burned away, it did not just reveal the pythons, it revealed a landscape completely transformed by a monster of our own making. And the numbers, they are terrifying. The air in the Everglades is not just hot, it is heavy, it clings to your skin. But on this particular morning, in December 2025, the heat is coming from something else. A crew from the Florida Forest Service is moving along the edge of a sawgrass prairie. They are carrying drip torches. These are metal canisters with a loop at the end, dripping a mixture of diesel and gasoline. They are not putting out fires, they are starting them, and as the wall of fire moves forward, you see movement that makes the hair on your neck stand up. It is a Burmese python, easily three meters long, forced out of its refuge. For the first time in its life, it cannot rely on its camouflage. The intricate patterns on its skin are useless against the backdrop of scorched black earth. The python is exposed. In April 2025, during a controlled burn in Palm Beach County, land managers watched as the ground came alive with pythons. It was the moment that confirmed everyone's worst fear. The outbreak was not just bad, it was everywhere. You have to understand the scale of this place. We are talking about thousands of acres. When the grass grows tall, you could hide a school bus in it, and no one would see it. Now imagine trying to find a python with perfect camouflage. It is impossible, but fire changes the rules of the hunt. Reports from the field were staggering. In one case, a hunter watched the smoke clear to reveal a 3.6-meter python trying to flee toward a canal. In another, the heat drove off a nesting female, exposing a clutch of eggs that would have become 50 baby pythons by summer. This is the reality of controlled burning. It is violent, loud, and brutally effective. It turns the python's greatest strength, its ability to disappear, into its greatest weakness. They are forced to move, and when they move, we can finally see them. But it is not just about seeing them, it is about understanding what they have done to the landscape. When the fire strips away the grass, it reveals an eerily empty marsh, devoid of other life. Raccoons, foxes, opossums, gone. The fire exposes the pythons. Yes, but it also exposes the crime scene. It shows us a world where the only thing left standing is the monster. To understand why we are burning the marsh, we have to understand how we got here. It all started with the exotic pet trade. In the 1970s Miami was the capital of exotic pets. People wanted something exciting and dangerous. They bought baby Burmese pythons. At about two feet long, they looked cute. They wrapped around your arm. They were manageable. But the problem was they never stopped growing. That baby python would become six feet long in a year, then eight feet, then ten feet. Suddenly you had a telephone pole-sized predator living in a glass tank in your living room. And the cost of feeding it was enormous. So what did people do? They drove to the edge of the swamp and released them, not realizing they were unleashing a biological weapon. Then Hurricane Andrew hit in 1992. It destroyed breeding facilities, pet stores, and zoos. Countless pythons were released into the wild all at once, and the Everglades was the perfect refuge. Warm, wet, and essentially an all-you-can-eat buffet. The pythons found paradise. Nothing in Florida evolved to eat a six-meter snake. Alligators fought back, sure, but a large python can eat an alligator. We have seen the photos. We have seen the aftermath of a python splitting open, trying to swallow an alligator whole. It is a clash of giants, but the python's numbers win. They are ambush predators. They coil in the water, holding their breath for up to 30 minutes. They blend into roots and mud. And by the time we realized there was a problem, it was already too late. In some parts of the Everglades, marsh rabbit populations have dropped by 99%. Raccoons, down 99%. Opossums, 99%. Bobcat numbers have plummeted. The python is a super predator. It causes the collapse of the food chain. It eats the prey that native predators depend on. So the Florida panther, already endangered, has nothing left to eat, because the pythons ate the deer first, and they reproduce at an astonishing rate. A single female can lay up to 100 eggs a year. So even if only a fraction survive, the population explodes. This is not linear growth, this is an exponential invasion. 
Current models estimate anywhere from tens of thousands to over 100,000 pythons out there, but no one knows for sure, because for every one we see, there are hundreds we do not. They have conquered the marsh, they are moving into mangrove forests, they have been found swimming in the ocean, crossing from island to island in the Florida Keys. They are adaptable, resilient, and constantly hungry. That is why controlled burns are so critical. You cannot fight an enemy you cannot see. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. So how do you burn a swamp without destroying it? The Florida Forest Service and the National Park Service plan these operations months in advance. They wait for the perfect window. Too dry and the fire burns too hot. Too wet and it will not spread. They look for ideal conditions. Specific humidity. Winds blowing in the right direction to keep smoke away from highways and hospitals. They target the dry season, usually from December through May. This is when water levels are low and grass ignites easily. The goal is to reduce the buildup of dry grass, leaves and fallen branches that accumulate over time. If you do not burn it intentionally, lightning eventually will, and that accidental fire fueled by a decade of buildup becomes an uncontrollable monster. So controlled burns are a public safety measure, but in Python hotspots like the Francis S. Taylor Wildlife Management Area or Big Cypress National Preserve, the strategy changes. Here, the burn is designed to create spread. Fire crews work in teams. They use off-road vehicles, swamp buggies, and even helicopters. As the fire spreads, as the mulch layer burns away, the insulation disappears. Suddenly, the ground heats up and moisture drops. Pythons are reptiles. They rely on the environment to regulate their body temperature. They do not like being exposed on hot, blackened ground. That forces them to seek unburned tree islands or deep canals. This is when they move fast. Fire managers and biologists are coordinating more closely than ever. The South Florida Water Management District has integrated controlled burns into its python removal program. They know a burn today makes hunting easier tomorrow, but this work is dangerous. Smoke disorients you. The terrain is brutal. You are walking on jagged limestone full of holes, hidden under mud and ash. One wrong step, and you can break an ankle. And now you also have to worry about stepping on an angry 3.6-meter python that was just forced out of its home. Fire does something else too. It clears invasive plants that do not belong there, like melaleuca trees, that drain the wetlands. It restores the natural flow of the Everglades. It allows native grasses to grow back lush and green. And you know what loves fresh grass? Rabbits. Fire clears the ground. New grass grows. Rabbits and rodents return to eat the grass. And pythons return to eat the rodents. But this time, the grass is shorter. This time we are waiting for them. It is a cycle of destruction and renewal. But for the python, it is a disruption. It breaks their rules. It forces them to make mistakes. And in nature, mistakes are fatal. When the smoke clears, the landscape looks like another planet. A black and grey world. Burned sawgrass stalks. Stands like charred toothpicks. The ground is coated in ash. The smell of carbon and wet earth hangs in the air. This is when the hunters move in. They are hired to do one thing. Remove invasive pythons. They are tough. They spend nights wading through alligator-filled water, battling mosquitoes, and wrestling massive snakes by hand. After a fire, their job gets easier. In unburned marsh, a python is nearly invisible. Its skin blends perfectly into shadow, but against the black backdrop of a freshly burned area, a yellow-brown python stands out like a neon sign. A study by the US Geological Survey used radio telemetry to track pythons before and after fires. Transmitters were implanted in the snakes to monitor their behavior. The results were clear. After a fire, pythons move. They move nearly 50% more than normal. And movement is their weakness. Hunters patrol levees and burn edges. They scan open ground. They look for the S-shaped curve in the ash. In April 2025, after the Palm Beach fire, python sightings jumped by 15% in just 48 hours. That is massive. It turns finding a needle in a haystack into finding a needle on a black table. A video recently went viral. You may have seen it. It shows a hunter walking through a freshly burned area of the Everglades. The ground is still smoking in places. He stops and points. There coiled beside a limestone rock is a massive animal. The hunter approaches. The python hisses and strikes, jaws wide, backward-facing teeth exposed. But without grass to tangle in, the hunter has the advantage. He grabs it behind the head. It takes two people to wrestle it into a bag. That python was full of eggs. An entire generation of predators eliminated in five minutes. But it is not just ground observation. The lack of vegetation allows new technology. Drones equipped with high-resolution cameras can fly over burned areas, where grass once blocked visibility. 
Drones can now spot a basking python against black ground from 90 meters up. Scientists also sample water for python DNA. This tells them if pythons are present and provides the evidence needed to send in capture teams. But something strange is happening. Even with fire, even when exposed, pythons are still incredibly hard to see. They bury themselves in mud. They hide in deep solution holes in limestone. The Everglades is not just a swamp. It is a massive 1.5 million acre ecosystem, and we are only burning a fraction of it. For every python pulled from the ashes, how many slip away? How many slide silently into deep mangroves where airboats cannot go and fire cannot reach? This is the dark hypothesis that keeps python biologists awake at night. We are not eliminating pythons, we are selectively breeding them. By removing the visible snakes, the ones basking on levees, we are eliminating careless genes. What remains? The hiders, the shadow dwellers, the ones instinctively afraid of engine vibrations or gasoline smells. We may be witnessing the rise of a super python. Hunters report strange behavior. Pythons are becoming more cautious, almost calculating. They are shifting entirely to nocturnal movement, traveling only during moonless nights when human vision is useless and even night vision struggles under dense canopy. There are rumors of pythons adapting to sudden cold snaps, burrowing deeper into limestone to survive freezes that should have killed them. The strangest theory involves the fire itself. There is fear we are creating a generation of ash-born pythons. If we turn the Everglades black through repeated burns, Will pythons evolve darker coloration? Are we driving a mutation toward melanism? Charcoal black snakes invisible on scorched ground. A predator you cannot see until you step on it. They are also expanding their range. They are moving north. There is speculation they use canal systems not just as habitat, but as underground highways straight into suburbs. They appear in backyards in Homestead, coiled around pool pumps in Miami. Some believe they are drawn to electromagnetic noise from cities or to prey density, Rats, pets, raccoon populations thriving near humans. If pressure in the Everglades becomes too intense, if burns happen too often, the python population may not die out, it may spread, like water behind a breaking dam. Fire is a tool, yes, it clears ground, but it is not a cure, and the battlefield itself is turning against us. Climate change is altering seasons, dry seasons are becoming furnace hot, turning sawgrass into fuel. Every controlled burn becomes a gamble. If winds shift, if peat soil ignites, it does not just burn the surface, it burns history, it permanently destroys the land. Meanwhile, the enemy watches. By removing pythons from accessible areas, we may be creating a shadow population deep in the untouched marsh. In those unburnable zones, are they growing larger? Without human interference, are dominant females reaching lengths of 6.3 to 9 meters? Are there monsters out there, thick as oil drums, laying a hundred egg clutches at once, building massive new bloodlines waiting to reclaim burned ground? Scientists are racing to decode the invader's genome. They are studying gene control technology, powerful and frightening, that could theoretically wipe out the species. The idea is to engineer pythons to produce only males or carry a kill switch gene, then release them to breed. It sounds perfect, a biological smart bomb, but the scenarios where it goes wrong are nightmares. What if the gene mutates? Could we create a python that cannot reproduce but does not die? A zombie population living 40 years, consuming everything with no biological drive except hunger. Worse still, is horizontal gene transfer. What if the engineered gene jumps species? What if the python kill gene spreads to native indigo snakes, rattlesnakes, or the broader ecosystem? We could trigger a cascading extinction event, wiping out the very reptiles we are trying to save. Then there are pheromone traps. Scientists are trying to synthesize the scent of receptive females to lure males out of deep mangroves but some fear we are ringing a dinner bell too loud. Could concentrated pheromones draw pythons from hundreds of miles away? Could we accidentally pull snakes inward instead of dispersing them? We are throwing everything we have at this problem. Thermal drones, dogs trained to sniff snake musk, bounties, but for now, fire remains the only heavy weapon producing real results. It resets the cycle. It gives native animals a brief window to breathe, to run, to escape the flames. If this story mattered to you, please like and share, subscribe to the channel, Turn on notifications so you never miss an update, and thank you for watching and supporting us. Thanks for being with us on this great journey. Leave your thoughts in the comments and like to help us. Remember to subscribe for more. See you soon.